to India and one of his disciples, I think it was Sister Nivedita probably, or Sister Christine. Disciple. Their first sight of India. Um, and Sister Nivedita says to Vivekananda, Oh Swami, how peaceful from the ship. She thinks, How peaceful. And Vivekananda turned upon her uh, uh, angrily and he said, No, this is the peace of the grave. People are, people are under the dominion of a foreign power, they are uh, illiterate, they are, uh, they are malnourished, they are weak and ignorant. And therefore, it's, it seems already quite and rural and uh, idyllic and peaceful. No, this is not true peace. He says it's the peace of the grave. So inaction is not, it's not spirituality. It's not Vedanta. Then from inaction comes action with passion, with desire. I want something and I'm willing to work for it. That's much better actually. So from inaction to action with desire, with passion. That comes from what is called Rajas, Rajoguna. And Vivekananda says, this too is not spiritual. This is also not spiritual. It binds, it traps you in this world. You just have to look outside. It's a city full of energy, full of power. Um, this is one of the greatest cities on earth we are living in. And we are living, it's in the heart of that city. So it's energy, but it's mostly filled by passion, by desire. I want, and therefore. And it leads to disasters. Even the most recent 2008 collapse, which the country and the world is still suffering from. What, what did it come out from? Not just from hard, not for, not from hard work. It came from greed. It came from desire. I want. And that fuels my work, fuels my work. But what is Vedanta? What is the philosophy of work? Swami Vivekananda said, intense work combined with supreme serenity. Complete calmness. Complete calmness. Can I work intensely? for the welfare of everybody. And yet, internally, in the midst of that work, I remain absolutely calm. That is the teaching of Vedanta. That's why Vedanta becomes practical. Is it possible? Is it possible to work like that? Swami Vivekananda said, yes. Um, you see, there's this difference between working uh, with interest of one's own. A senior Swami once taught, uh, taught me this thing. I asked him, is it possible to work without Passion, without desire. I want something, therefore I work. It sounds nice, work without any motive, without any motive of gain. But is it possible? And this old Swami, he told me that uh, my boy, there's a difference between disinterested work and uninterested work. In English, there's two words. Uninterested means do it somehow. I don't have anything to gain, gain from it. So I have to do it somehow. I do it without any interest. That is tamasic, laziness. Disinterested means I have no axe to grind. I have nothing personal to gain from it. And yet I can do it perfectly. You do a puja, a worship. You do it perfectly because you are offering it to God. You don't get anything back. You are not asking for anything back from it. So in that way, can we spiritualize our work? There is an interest in it. If you say, is there no interest in it at all? No desire in it at all? There is. The desire is enlightenment. Spiritual enlightenment. No material gain, no personal gain. I want the good of everybody and my own spiritual enlightenment. So Vivekananda gave us this motto. Atmano Mokshartham Jagat Vitanyacha. Meaning, for your own enlightenment. Not for monetary gain, not for power, not for name and fame. Only for enlightenment, only for God, for realizing God. For your own enlightenment and for the welfare of the world. You may not go out and start doing welfare to the whole world. You may start in your own little circle, in your office or in your school or in your family, in, in your apartment where you live there. Just the people around you. I am doing work, I am concerned for them rather than for myself. And I try to do good to everybody without expecting any return because, as Vivekananda said, the one who is giving, let him kneel down and offer. Not in charity. You are blessed that you can give. You are blessed that you can serve. The one who is giving, let him kneel down and offer. The one who is receiving, let him stand up and receive. It's not charity. It's spiritual practice. So the essentials of Vedanta remain the same. Vivekananda said the two points. Essentials of Vedanta. That the divinity within us. We are not mere creatures of flesh and blood, born today and destined to die tomorrow. No. That's the body. You are not denying that the body is born and the body will die. It's a fact. But we are not the body. We are an immortal soul 
an infinite consciousness working through this body. And Vedanta teaches us how we can find that out, how we can actually experience this, how we can realize it. Vivekananda again and again said, my mission in life can be put in a few words. It is to preach unto mankind their inner divinity and how to make it manifest in every movement of life. Not just realize it, not just read about it, not just know about it, not just give lectures about it, but actually make it manifest in life, in my behavior, in my thoughts, in my speech, in my action. That is one great teaching. That consciousness, that by which we do everything, by which we see, we hear, we smell, we touch, we think, at the basis, the source of that is that pure consciousness. It is nothing unknown. Vivekananda said, the self, the pure self is the most known of all. You know yourself first and then you know anything else. You just don't know yourself as you truly are. Vedanta will show you what you truly are. Vedanta is practical because it does not preach an unknown Gana. Vedanta does not say you have to believe. Vedanta says, take up the most evident fact of your life. What is the most evident fact of your life? That you exist. That I am. And investigate that. Vedanta will show you how to investigate that. We teach you the techniques. And you will find that what you were seeking for in temples and churches and in meditation and in prayer and so on and so forth, you are that reality and you can actually experience it. That is the goal of human life. Vivekananda said, Vedanta teaches us to have faith in ourselves. Faith in ourselves, not in a new agey kind of, I am great, look at me, not in that kind of thing. Faith in our spiritual self. Faith in our spiritual self. Vedanta teaches us, God is within you. Have faith in the God who is within you and most evident. He said powerfully, even now, young children in India quote this. The old religion said, he who does not believe in God is an atheist. The new religion says, he who does not believe in himself or herself is an atheist. He who does not believe in himself. It's not just rhetoric. It's not just uh, positive psychology. You must believe in yourself. Not just that. It's very profound. It's rooted in Vedantic uh, philosophy that you are that divinity. It's shining forth from within you. Faith in yourself, what he taught again and again and again. Pray to all the gods in the world. The answer, if it does come at all, it comes from within you. You only mistake it as coming from about outside. That, that reality is within you. And the second Thing he taught, the second message of Vedanta is the oneness of all existence. This infinite existence within me, this pure consciousness, how many pure consciousnesses are there? Is each of, one, of us one separate pure consciousness? Seven billion human beings, seven billion pure consciousnesses? Or trillions of living creatures, trillions of pure consciousnesses? Or is it one pure consciousness? And Vedanta said it is one. Vedanta teaches you that it is one pure consciousness behind all of us. So this is the unity, the oneness of all existence. At the core reality, we are all one. We are all one. And Vivekananda showed how this is the basis of all ethics. Why should I do good to others? He said, why should I not cut the throat of my neighbor if, if, it, uh, serves, if it gives me gain? Because you and your neighbor are one. Love thy neighbor. Why? Because you are one. At the deepest level, you and your neighbor are one. All of us, yes, including the most annoying <laughs> neighbor you've got, you are one with them. He said, whom to praise and whom to blame, where praiser and praised, blamer are blamed, are but one. One alone exists. It appears as nature. So, you. What is you and what is this world, they are both at their root, one divine ground of being, one existence. So, oneness of existence and the divinity of the, uh, of, of uh, man, or the divinity of the if you want to take two things away from practical Vedanta, take these two things away. The divinity within me and the oneness of existence. This is the basis of, uh, of practical Vedanta. This is what he taught. And then could go on and on, but I think I have run out of time. Vivekananda, he said that uh, it may be that I shall see fit to give up this body. But I shall not cease to teach. I shall not 